Now we're going to apply some paint and primer and I'll show you what you come up against. What I'm using here is a duration. I won't say who it's by, but this is a, a paint that I've used a lot, we use in our company. As you can see on this can is the accent, which is the darker color. And this can is the body color, which is a light color. Now what I have here is I have a, actually a light violet and a darker violet. The light will go on the body right here and the dark will go on the accent trim. Now I haven't cleaned this house up because um, I, I need to show uh, what I'm doing. I'm kind of keeping a record of it. Now the, the number one thing about um, the number one thing about doing a house is the surface must be prepared correctly. And what I've had here is there used to be a gigantic bush right here. Gigantic. And it was just 35 years old and I couldn't get in and paint this when I first painted this house. So what we're going to do here is if you have any bare wood, this is rule number one, any bare wood spots on anything, you want to use oil primer. This is an oil primer right here interior exterior it's got oil in it but the thing I want you to notice is that this has been sitting a long time and if you want you can take this right down to your paint uh, store and have them shake it up which is good or you want to stir it now, that's your oil right here and this is your primer underneath but you want to whatever paint that you have you want to stir it up really good before you use it because if you don't, the heavier sediment is always going to stick to the bottom. You want to do this job right. Okay? Now, another thing about paint is that uh, paint cannot be frozen. If it freezes, it will lose its binders and it will be worthless. Now, how, do, how can you tell if paint's frozen because everyone leaves it in the garage? All you really need to do is take the top off take a big whiff. And I'll tell you what, paint that is, has gone bad has the most nasty chemical smell that I can't even describe it but once you smell it one time you'll know good paint from bad paint so if you're gonna store your paint or your primer after you use it do not put it in an unheated garage because it will freeze the paint and destroy it it's also good to have your numbers paint numbers now what I'm gonna do after this here is I'm going to uh, oil prime I'm using a real cheap brush. I don't want to use my good brushes on it because uh, cleaning up oil is a—it's—it's it's hard to do. You have to use um, thinner, and it's messy. And if you use just some cheap two-dollar brush, you don't have to worry about it. But I'm gonna—I'm going to, I'm going to uh, mix all this up, get out my brush, and uh, I'm going to put on a little pair of latex gloves. That way, if you get any oil—if you get any oil on your clothes. Or your hands or anything else it doesn't come off so you just have to be careful with it all right so that's I'm going to stir this up and put some gloves on and we'll continue from there now I've taken some of the oil and put it in a small quart pan here you don't need to carry around 10 pounds of oil you're just gonna or 10 pounds of paint you want to put it probably about half as much as I have in here and you'll notice the paintbrush doesn't have a lot of stuff all over the handles. You notice my hands. Now I'm using these um, blue latex gloves and there's a reason for that. Oil tends to stick between the fingers and so does regular paint and these are your tools for getting your product on correctly. So if your hands are all gummed up you you can't do a good job and you might as well do a good job right the first time. So what you want to do is take your brush. I use a little cheap two dollar brush. You can also use uh, white china or black china uh, oil brushes that are specially made for oil they cling to oil better white and black china brushes are basically horsehair they're not a latex brush they're an oil brush me I'm not gonna worry about it you can also spray this on but if you do that you're gonna have to spraying oil is tricky because um, oil droplets can travel with the wind 20-30 feet 
and you can if you have a car out here anywhere you can get it on the car and you'll be in a lot of trouble so I would suggest you probably do it with a brush first of all you want to take your brush and you want to get into all the nooks and crannies remember with painting the number one thing about painting is to get the product on the wall okay that's you want about three millimeters but with with this and remember I have to do this with one hand so I'm kind of letting this dry you want it smooth these are all, always a problem these edges right here underneath so you want to get and these these boards have curled a little bit due to the fact that they're about 40 Jesus 50 years old and I have I'll have to cut out some bad caulking right here not bad caulking I'll have to just cut out a little bit and put a new bead of caulk right there that's no problem and as you can see I put in caulk in here it's not perfect I like to go two or three coats with myself but that's just my artistic bent on it now when you get done with the oil if you're you can clean your brushes out with thinner what I like to do is take a little plastic bag and just wrap the brush in a plastic bag keep the air out that way the oil you can use it again if you want to but you don't have to mess with it so I'm going to go over all this area that I have scraped off so far which is the only bad area on the house like I said I couldn't get to it before because I had a bush about 10 feet tall and it was about a foot from the house so oil priming is uh, a very good for water repellent it is the best the only problem is oil oil priming is messy you have to be careful and whatever you get it on it's not going to come off if you're doing this around concrete like right here I'm not it's on dirt I would have tarps down here I would have everything that I do not want to get any bit of oil on I'll mask off which I can't do right at this moment because I have the I'm doing this with one hand trying to keep this camera clean but anyway uh, the next video you'll see all of this uh, all of the bare, bare spots being primed out to where I want them and then we'll get on to the next thing maybe caulking or we'll do caulking and then masking and then we'll do spraying and then I'll show you proper brush techniques proper spray techniques what to use it's very simple you can rent a sprayer anywhere you want you can buy one from Home Depot or somewhere real cheap remember to cut back all of your foliage from your house now generally when a customer uh, requests a paint job their job is to do all that we don't do lawn work okay all that crap's got to be cut down and moved away so we can paint that's our job Okay, we continue.